Hello and welcome to Jeep Sheep TV. This is going to be home of poor camera angles and uh, mediocre dialogue because I am currently working with a cell phone. But what we are doing here is we're taking a 4 liter, I don't know if you can see that, 4.0L intake and we're putting it on the little 2.4 liter engine on my red YJ. So to help us today we have the Jeep Sheep himself. He is ready to go and we have the part which I've already spent a little bit of time cleaning as you can tell. Okay this video today is sponsored by a brass brush and some brake parts cleaner. Hopefully what we will experience is an easy job. <laughs> As you can see, this is working quite well. So the, the junkyard parts uh, are actually becoming clean uh, pretty easily. And that's really good news because that's not always the case. So yeah, we're just going to go through and brush and brush and wipe with paper towel. Now I will give 10 points to whoever can tell me why I'm using a brass brush. You can add in the comments below or you can wait three seconds for me to explain it. Uh, the reason being that if brass is softer than aluminum, that that was it. It's not going to scratch it all up as this is a seal surface right here. Much to no one's surprise, the inside of an air intake is actually silver instead of black. And so we have achieved that and I have cleaned off the seal surface doesn't look like it, but fairly well uh, from what it was. And I think it'll be somewhat acceptable. We'll find out, that's for sure. So now we're gonna go into the engine bay and make sure this is actually the right part and or it'll fit. This might be over before it started. All right, so we're in the engine bay now with the uh, legendary 2.4 liter four cylinder AMC design Jeep engine which um, legend has it is powered by four very angry squirrels and they are not angry enough to get me down the highway so let's give them a little bit more to be mad about right here is the old intake and as you can see i have copious amounts of oil and gunk that flows into this every single day i believe there's excessive blow by and you can tell by my air filter which is also black in regions that i have a lot of oil that comes into my air. But that's a project for another day. So what I've done is I have disconnected this guy here. This is what um, connects your gas pedal to your engine. It, so you put your foot down and the engine goes vroom as a result. And this guy here, ignore the staples on there, that's another story. This is what connects your input to your transmission. That's the kick down cable, which lets it know when to downshift. So as you see here, we have a spring and that opens up, air goes into your engine. Just like that, the spring feels pretty similar to the one on my new intake, so that's good. We have a sensor back here, which I am told via forums I should be using the same sensor, go figure. The computer would like to see the same thing. And then uh, this guy here, that is the um, throttle position sensor. So that is what tells your computer where your foot's at. And that's directly connected to this whole mechanism here, which we'll see. I believe this control is your idle. Um, so yeah, we definitely want to use the, the correct one of these as a four cylinder and a six cylinder are going to have different idle characteristics because of the amount of cylinders. So we're going to get this out of here. It's messy. I might clean it up. But more importantly, we're going to swap some sensors next. You can see the size of hole it is very different. And although there's going to be the same amount of restriction um, because the size of hole inside of there is going to be smaller, the internet says that this does help a little bit. Well, we'll find out. Yeah, this is not the best view, but uh, it's hands-free and that's worth something. So in case anyone's following along at home, these are metric tens. So on other YouTube channels, you'll probably uh, get a lot more out of this than you will on mine, but 
I couldn't find any videos on someone doing this. So you get me. These screws are not in very tight. I would highly recommend looking up torque specs when you put them back in. That's what I'm going to do because we are torquing into aluminum and uh, if you don't already know it's really easy to void the threads in aluminum if you tighten it too far so really super duper tight is not always good. Fun fact, if your engine bay looks as dirty as mine, you may have neglected your Jeep throughout college. Alright, this is the fun part where we get to see if there's a seal under here, and if so, if it's still intact, there, there is. There's a small seal right here. There we go. Okay, see that? Don't break this. Mine is not in the best condition, but it's not broken, so we're going to hold on to that. Don't let random debris fall into your engine and do so by applying <laughs> non-random debris, intentional debris. So take a paper towel, stuff it in there. Don't lose it in there, but stuff it in there and that will prevent dirt and dust from finding its way into your intake. So I have taken out the uh, 2.4 liter air intake and I have cleaned it roughly, not super well. Um, and these right here, these are the sensors that we need to be taking off of this, but I want to direct your attention to something kind of neat. Right up in here, you can see a whole bunch of pock marks. Um, I don't actually know what those are from. It's very peculiar to me. I'd like to learn that. If, if anyone knows, that'd be really super cool to find out, but you can see on the 4 liter one, um, that's not the case. You can still see the machining there, the lines. That's probably from a lathe of some kind. Um, that is what I would expect. This would not. It looks cool. It looks old. <laughs> Moving forward, these guys here, they are a uh, T20. Oh, you can kind of see that. T20 Torx bit. Fits right in there. Um, and that is how we're going to get those out right now. Here is your TPS. Comes out just like that, and it's real nasty on the inside. Um, it's got these little teeth. As that dude rotates, uh, this guy is going to report its position to your computer. Uh, another fun little fact is if your Jeep is idling really weird, um, say it's idling incredibly low at uh, stoplights, or you know just when you turn it on, um, or you just got really weird throttle response, or I had an issue where it was engine braking coming off the highway. I'd let off the gas and it would just engine brake me down like 30 miles an hour like someone stepped on the brakes. Replace this guy and all that goes away. This little thing right here, as it is dying, it will cause the engine to do a bunch of things that appear to be other issues, and they're not. They're this. So I always start here. I always tell people to start here it's like twelve dollars depending on your vehicle so TPS sensor we're gonna move that over and hopefully it all bolts up I have read that it does and it looks like it will so good news all right so now I've taken off uh, this guy here which I don't remember what it's called this is called the idle air control valve but I believe it controls your idle um, again uh, t20 screws so um, Briefly, how I believe this works, this is actually all guessing, but through my knowledge of engines, this is what I would assume. So, you got air that comes down here, and it hits this plate here. Well, your engine still needs air, because at idle, it doesn't just run on nothing. So this guy here allows air to come through here, which would then go in here, which is blocked. Um, but this looks like... Boop right here. Looks like a solenoid which is going to move this way, which is going to allow air into this chamber down here which is connected here, allowing air to bypass the uh, butterfly right here and go into your engine allowing it to run. But not a lot of air because again you're not going to be um, necessarily using this too much while you're 
going down the road, but more so at idle. Fun little lesson there. Um, so the forms that I read said that we do need to remove this. It's a little bit easier than taking just the solenoid off, but we'll find out in a moment. And notice that this is very black here. That's a seal. Um, just like before, keep in mind the seals. Don't break them. We need them. They're very important. So there's that. Um, we're going to take the 2.4 liter one of these guys off, or 2.5 liter, I've been saying 2.4 this whole time, there it is, 2.5 L. Um, we're going to take this off and replace it onto the 4 liter. The thing to take note of is on my 94 YJ, I have security torques, so make sure you have the correct tools for the job. Alright, I've taken this part off of the 2.5 liter intake, and there's something very interesting that you're going to notice in here, let's see if I can show it. This plunger, oh yeah, I have that unscrewed. This plunger, even when it's screwed together, is not plugging the hole as if as the other one was. So I'm gonna do some research real quick and find out if that's supposed to happen or if the solenoid's broken. Um, I haven't noticed anything weird about my idle and my Jeep, but maybe there is something weird and I'm just not noticing it. So I'm going to research that and I'll update you on what I find. And I didn't get a lot of results because I'm not having any idle issues. So all of the forums were about issues with your idle, which I believe my Jeep idles pretty well, um, all things considered. So what I did was I cleaned this off and we're going to assume that this is correct. Maybe this one here is actually stuck, being a junkyard component. Um, there's a good possibility of that. So maybe mine is the the good one here, and we're just gonna assume that. I will be doing a test a little bit later. Hopefully I can definitively tell uh, whether or not this is correct. But for now, we're gonna not fix something that isn't broke. So um, I went through, I cleaned it, and important thing is don't forget this little O-ring. It goes on, on right there, and it plugs this whole thing out. Just don't forget this, that would be bad. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to get in there and I'm going to clean up some of this area. So when I introduce the new part, um, I don't get it all dirty and ruin all the cleaning that I did. Alright, we're back and I cleaned it up a little bit, especially around where the gasket's going to go. That's nice and shiny. Um, that turned out to be a lot more gunk than I expected, so that's another day. But there is silver under there and that's important. I'm going to install the... Uh, the intake valve here and I did when I looked it up this is called the idle air control valve just for those that care and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble this with this idle air control valve removed I'm going to try to start the vehicle and my assumption is that with the rush of air that's coming through here as if the valve were wide open that it's going to try and close that valve. Um, so with this plugged in and the engine running, I'm going to see if that moves. If that moves, then this thing works and my fears can be relieved. But I'm assuming it does work because, like I said, I have no issues. But we'll find out. Might be a fun experiment. And it hopefully won't blow anything up. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this. Make sure to get that seal on there. One last thing I want to note before I do that is on these four liters, there's the map sensor gets its vacuum off of this little dude right here. And on this 2.5 liter, that's not the case. My map sensor actually gets its vacuum right here. So this is not necessary. I have one of these little connectors from some vacuum lines that I tore out in the past. I put a screw in it. So I'm going to just slip that over top of here and uh, just block that off because we do not need a map sensor right there as the map sensor is actually over there and in case you're curious this is it right here so that vacuum line goes to the map sensor map sensor talks to the computer via this wire all right so i'm going to do all that and i'll come back when it's done okay so i apologize i ran my test without you i was going to be recording but i wanted to be sure nothing went wrong so what happened was i started the car with that off and it did exactly as I expected. The computer went and tried to close the valve. It started pushing it closed, which means that this works, which is great. Yeah, again, I wish you could have seen that, but at 3,000 RPM with my leg in the engine bay, I didn't want to be holding a camera as well. 
So, I'm going to put this thing back together and we're going to see how it goes. Hopefully it idles well, but I'm assuming it will because that guy's moving. It's a little hard to hear me here, but with that attached, that RPM has gone down to just over a thousand, which is super duper good. This is in here. And it appears to work. So, everything's attached. And that's it. As far as power gains go, I can't tell any difference, which is pretty much exactly what I expected. Um, it's supposed to only give maybe two horsepower if it's working well, um, but it never hurts to have more airflow into your engine. So, I don't know, let's say it helped. I don't really know, but I did notice I took a trip heading south where I was going 70, 80, keeping up with traffic, doing really good. And then I got about 17 miles per gallon, which is pretty good when you're pegged at 3,000 RPM for an hour and a half. On the way home, going north, I was going a little bit slower because traffic was a bit heavier, and I got about 18. So I don't know what your Jeep does, but that's good for me. That's really impressive uh, gas mileage numbers. And I'm going to say it's due to the lack of restriction in the intake, but I have no idea. Long story short. Have fun, it's an easy swap, and uh, you might learn something. See you later.